Bear Mike is on the line. Hi, Mike. Hi, Ray. My first reaction to the uh, robot that helps you sleep was one of uh, psychological addiction. I, I don't think people realize how quickly, uh, well, maybe they do, how much addiction we have with people who are, uh, you know, screen, they're addicted to screens and iPhones, but this, this uh, robot that would help you fall asleep, um, you know, that could be a very, very quick uh, addition that you need to have, like sleeping pills, and that's what I worry about when we talk about smart anything, all the technology that we have can easily become, uh, we become slaves to the technology, and that's what I, I always think about when I first hear about these new conveniences. But it, isn't that robot, Mike, uh, a more benign option than taking chemicals to help you sleep? I mean, if, if you just need something to hug and that'll help you drift off, uh, might that be better than actually using sleeping well, pills? Well, compared to chemicals, uh, I guess there's always a trade-off to everything, and all technology has trade-offs, and that's what, that's what people who, who embrace things without thinking about what they're giving up, because, you know, we have, we have a tendency to, to be dependent upon these, particularly uh, if we need them, and psychological addictions to chemicals is not any, it's not, you know, it's not great either, but I just think there's, there's, there's the dark side to the technology that a lot of people don't uh, even, they're not even aware of, but I think they, they need to be aware of uh, whenever we take anything that uh, makes our lives simpler and, and requires less thinking and less uh, human, human, uh, Intuition. Mike from Milwaukee. Now compare that caller to this caller. Montreal, Canada is next. Brian, welcome to the program. Hi, Ray. Hi, Joanna. I'm calling from another country, as you can tell. So maybe that's why these consumer-related products seem to be just so linked to the American way of life. And for just an example, that, that famous suitcase that walks itself around, it would be useless in my city for four or five months of the year because we are covered in snow and it could never put on snowshoes, let me tell you that. But, but more to the point, the issue of sustainability also seems to be almost inevitably a second thought when it's a consumer-oriented mar um, marketplace that we're talking about. And once again, let me give it, relate to that question of the luggage. It's exactly the wrong approach to build a lot of these little tiny lithium ion batteries into everybody's luggage trying to keep the weight down but then when it runs down or becomes less useful a the luggage has to be thrown away because it simply can't follow you around anymore and b it becomes a fire hazard in the cargo hold of your airplane and eventually the airlines are going to refuse to take it if they don't already why isn't the thought to market these products to the airports where, where everybody needs it and where the airport can handle them on a mass market basis, replace the batteries as needed, and don't have to take them up into the air. Is that ever part of the marketing consideration, Joanna? Who well, calls in and obviously sounds confident. This radio station functions as part of a larger network, communication channels. They're all in it together. And part of the ploy is to hire operatives to pose as random people. Um, you know, not everyone that calls in, obviously, is a hireling. However, there are hirelings in the mist. There's probably third parties that are used to pay out. Either way, people have incentives. You know, the, but the radio station, if it accepts a random call and it perceives the person to be, you know, less than persuasive on the other side, it will take the call. So, perhaps the first caller is random. We don't know. The second caller seems to be not so random. And he is turning the audience to an issue that is really a non-issue. 
you know. So, whereas he captures the audience's attention, and the audience says, man, this guy seems like he knows what he's talking about. So, in that way, he's going to, you know, just nudge people towards, you know, the discussion that the program would prefer for the audience to, to hear. And this discussion is about a suitcase. You know, it, the, 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 the conversation started talking about artificial intelligence. Yeah? So, like, um, the program, the radio station is supposed to be, you know, covering the grounds. And yet, you know, what, what you know, in the grand scheme of things, does this suitcase really, you know, pertain? So, you know, the audience is just captivated at this point. And they're thinking they're, they're, they're listening to a, a broad and deep discussion about an issue that, 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 that matters to them. Because even the radio stations say, hey, this really matters. This is going to affect all your life. But, the, you know, the discussion narrows to like this fine point about, you know, a, such a small issue. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when, they, when, when, when the radio station, you know, talks about these issues, they don't have, you know, a, a balanced viewpoint. They, they, they come with, with those, you know, agents for the, the companies that, that, that build the devices or have some motivation in seeing this line of products take off, you know, whatever it be. And how many times do we have to explain it? These people want to put a chip in you. If they want to have a chip in you, they want some kind of device. It's just supposed to hear everything you do. It's supposed to see your facial recognition, right? The satellites in the sky. Where's this person going? You know, people say, well, if you don't have anything to hide, you don't have anything to worry about. Do you know what they're doing with this information? With everyone? Do you really get it? No.